welcome welcome uh, to the split soul series podcast and uh, we're back with another episode with uh, spiriti and uh, today we're going to continue with the 13th chapter and uh, i think we had done the verse 1 and 2 but we'll do the third verse now i think um, okay so yeah let me just do the incantation om gyan timrandasya gyanan janishala ke sakshuru nitamya tasmay shri gurave namaha श्री चैतन्य मनो विष्णु स्थापित मेन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मायं तदापि स्वापदंतिकं हे कृष्ण करण सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपे कांदा रथ कांदा नमस्ते तप्त कंचन गौरंगी देवता परमेश्वरी ऋषिवा नमस्ते देवी प्रणामामि हरि प्रिये वंचकल्प दिग्विष कृपा सिंधु गे विचपति जानां पाप देवी वैष्णवे नमो नमः नमो विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण विष्णाय भूतले श्री मुदि भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी तनामने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारणे विशेष निवादी पाशदिशतारे श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिव साधि गौरवक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय राधाधाधा हरी जय गोपी जन बल्लाोपी जन बल्लाशोदनंदन व्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन व्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरा क्वेश्चन अर्जुन इन वन एंड टू just the, the basic items that he is asked about so if you look at the purport if you look at the first two three lines of uh, so you look in the first thing you know, of uh, one and two right one and two they are clubbed together so just look at the purport uh, first point he is asking what is prakriti of course brackets is nature second purusha the enjoyer so the answer to that is there are two purushas as we will come to know in the the later section of this chapter mm. there is the enjoyer that is us the living entity within this material body there is a supreme enjoyer that is the super soul and the or the supreme lord next kshetra the field basically meaning the field inside which the living entity lives and does sows different seeds of action and creates karma for him for so the field here is basically back to this material body the kshetra gnya that is the one who knows or has gyan of this field and what what's going on in the field again the answer is there are two such persons two entities there is us because we know what's going on inside our body there is also the supreme knower or the supreme kshetrajna who knows what's happening in all bodies because he is present as super soul then there is knowledge and the object of knowledge now knowledge here in the context of this chapter knowledge really means to know the difference between the bo- the material body and the spirit soul that's mm-hmm. the point that this whole chapter is going to drive home to us and the object of knowledge the object of knowledge in this case basically is again the same that is we and how we basically are different from the material body but some of it became confused and therefore we suffer so these topics there are six actually there is prakriti there is purusha there is kshetra there is kshetrajna there is gyana knowledge and the object of knowledge six of them some of two of them have double answers remember we said the shetrajna or the knower is not only the jiva but it's also supreme lord sitting as super soul 
Okay. And Purusha or the enjoyer, that's the second topic on this list, is again, there are two answers. There is us trying to enjoy with our limited capacities to lord it over material nature. But there is a supreme enjoyer who's got infinite ability to enjoy without getting trapped in anything. That's the, su the super soul, the supreme lord. Okay, now we can forget about all this and just jump to the very last sentence of this purport. Can you read that out? Uh, yeah, although the living entity is completely different from the material body, he somehow becomes related. This is also this okay. So th this sounds like a very simple and conclusive sentence because it's coming after everything he's talking about uh, in this purport. You know how a living uh, entity once he's a conditioned soul thinks I am a man, I am a woman, I am a cat, I am a dog, I am fat, I am thin, I am ugly, I am beautiful, I am happy, I am unhappy and so on. This is because of that identification. So the conclusion that those are all mistaken identifications. So therefore he says, although the living entity is completely different from the material body, he somehow becomes related. And that is really the cause of all our misery and our suffering and our karma and karmic reactions. So if somehow we can uh, completely absorb uh, this one sentence that we are completely different from the material body, we as, as in Jiva or the living entity, in its original blissful form, part and parcel of the blissful Satchidananda Vigraha blissful Lord. Mm. But somehow we become related and we become completely confused. So to always carry this uh, um, sentence in our mind will be a great help right through this chapter and also later. So therefore, whenever we suffer, uh, we are hurt, we have a very big setback, we're completely misunderstood by family members, friends, and we suffer. We just need to, this should be like the default setting running like uh, sentences, you know, put as advertisements on TV screens. It should be running on the brain that we are completely different from this material body and everything that comes with the material body, suffering, expectations, disappointments, grievances, connections, mm -hmm. relations. But somehow we got related. So if we can watch that a sentence running in our brain and like a default setting, just uh, refer back to it, we can there and then or then and there put a kind of halt to the chain of thoughts that's a reaction in our suffering. You know, I'm never understood or I'm always misunderstood in this family or the boss really cheated me or that fellow was basically stabbing me in the back. My girlfriend let me down. I'm never going to find the man or woman I really would like to find. This whole chain, just go back to this one sentence that the living entity is completely different from the material body. Somehow he or she became related. So it's a very valuable sentence. So it looks like a simple sentence. Okay, having said that, now we can proceed with uh, verse 3. Okay. Shetragnyam. Shetragnyam chapi. Yeah. Shetragnyam chapi mam vidhi. Sarva shetreshu bharata. Shetra shetragnyayo jnanam. Yataj jnanam matam mama. Shetragnyam chapi mam vidhi. Sarva shetreshu bharata. Shetra shetragnyayo. Jnanam yathaj jnanam patam mama. Shetra jnanam chapi mam vidhi. Sarva shetra shubharata. Shetra shetra jnayo jnanam yathaj jnanam matam mama. Please read the translation. O Skyan of Bharata, you should understand that I am also the knower in all bodies and to understand this body and its knower is called knowledge. That is my opinion. Okay. So, uh, he is now talking, giving an answer to uh, uh, his uh, description or as a reply to one of those items, you know, asking who is Shetra who is the knower. He's going to say that you are the knower in your individual body, but I am also the knower because I'm there in all bodies. So I'm kind of like the super or the supreme knower. Mm. And to understand this body and 
and it's knower. The difference between the two actually is called knowledge. That is my opinion. Okay, Purport, please read the first para of the Purport. Yeah, while discussing the subject of the body and the knower of the body, the soul and the super soul, we shall find three different topics of study. The Lord, the living entity and matter. In every field of activities, in every body, there are two souls, the individual soul and the super soul. Because the super soul is a plenary expansion of the supreme personality of God, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna says, I am also a knower, but I am not the individual knower of the body. I am the super knower. I am present in everybody as Paramatma or super soul. One who studies the subject matter of the field of activities and the knower of the field very minutely in terms of this Bhagavad Gita, of this Bhagavad Gita, can attain to knowledge. Okay. Now the Lord says, I am the knower of the field of activities in every individual body. The individual may be the knower of his own body, but he is not in knowledge of other bodies. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is present as the Super Soul in all bodies, knows everything about all bodies. He knows all the different bodies of all the various species of life. A citizen may know everything about his patch of land, but the king knows, has all the details or the information, not only of his residence or his palace, but all the properties possessed by all the individual citizens, because that's his job and he has a whole lot of staff uh, making sure that the records are there. Similarly, one may be the proprietor of the body individually, but the Supreme Lord is the proprietor of all bodies. The king is the original proprietor of the kingdom and the citizen is the secondary proprietor. Similarly, the Supreme Lord is the supreme proprietor of all bodies. Uh, the body consists of the senses, sure. The Supreme Lord is Rishi Kesha, the controller of the senses. He is the original controller of the senses, just as the king is the original controller of all the activities of the state, and the citizens are only secondary controllers. The Lord says, I am also the knower. This means that he is a super knower. The individual soul knows only his particular body. In the Vedic literature, it is stated as follows. Please read. Yeah, Shetrani hi Shari Rani Vijam Chapi Subhashube Tani Veti So Stani Veti Sa Yogatma Tataha Shetra Gnya Uchate. This body is called Shetra, and within it dwells the owner of the body and the Supreme Lord, who knows both the body and the owner of the body. Therefore, he is called the knower of all fields. The distinction between the field of activities, the knower of activities, and the supreme knower of activities is described as follows. Perfect knowledge of the constitution of the body, the constitution of the individual soul, and the constitution of the super soul is known in terms of Vedic literature as jnana. That is the opinion of Krishna. To understand both the soul and the super soul as one yet distinct is knowledge. One who does not understand the field of activity and the knower of activity is not in perfect knowledge. One has to understand the position of Prakriti, nature, Purusha, the enjoyer of nature, and Ishvara, the knower who dominates or controls nature and the individual soul. One should not confuse the three in their different capacities. One should not confuse the painter, the painting, and the easel. This material world, which is the field of activities, is nature. And the enjoyer uh, and the enjoyer of nature is the living entity, and above them both is the supreme controller, the personality of God. It is stated in the Vedic language in the Shvetashvata Upanishad, uh, chapter one, text twelve: "Bhogta bhogyam preritaram cha matva sarvam proktam trividam brahmam etat." There yeah. are three Brahman conceptions. Prakriti is Brahman as a field of activities and the Jiva, individual soul, is also Brahman and is trying to control material nature. And the controller of both of them is also Brahman, but he is the factual controller. In this chapter, it will all, yeah, uh, you want to say something? Or? You read, in this chapter? Okay. In, in this chapter, it will also be explained that out of the two knowers, one is fallible and the other is infallible. One is so superior. What, yeah, go ahead. If you can just stop here, what should we understand by of the two novas? One is fallible and the other is infallible. Fallible, infallible meaning liable to make mistakes, never making mistakes. mistakes. 
So the one is valuable. That is our individual. That is the individual yep. soul. And yeah, big, compared, yeah. yeah it's just the situations, make big mistakes, then pay for that, take wrong decisions. Other is infallible because he's like supremely perfect. So the extent to which we strengthen up our connection with the Supreme Lord, uh, we are less likely to make mistakes. Now, we are not, uh, uh, I mean, Sudama Brahmin and we are not Prithu Maharaj or something that the Lord will come and talk directly to us. So therefore, he's left lots of instructions in the form of these two basic books, the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam, the reading and absorbing which. And then, of course, the commentaries of different speakers on this. We're regularly uh, infusing our consciousness with this. We get to judge situations correctly and to understand what action to take in a situation. Because, yeah, we have a tiny bit of independence. The jiva does have. It is not all pre-fated, you know, predetermined as we normally think karma to be. That it's such a the normal Hindu uh, um, material religion type of perspective on karma. He said, anyway, it's all predestined. There's no scope. Whatever you do, what has to happen will happen. Now, broadly, in a generic sense, that's true. But the fact is that he's given us a little bit, a tiny spark, a little bit of independence or free will. But using the free will, free will means that you learn what is right and what is wrong and you select what is right and do it. So when we do that, instead of just responding blindly or in anger or out of frustration, then the Lord rewards us because he's sitting inside. He knows the clashing of our thoughts. You know, inside that I want to do this, I don't want to, I want to eat this, I don't want to eat this, I why why the hell should I bother? Look at it. That all that he's hearing. We need to have no doubts about it. So every time we make a huge effort and we basically take the right decision, even if there are many times that we falter and fall down, and he never gives up on us, as he's promised in different places. So uh, when we take the right decision, that is the real use of the little bit of independence we have. So although we are fallible and he is not fallible, he's infallible, uh, as we strengthen our connection with the Supreme Lord, automatically we are less likely to make mistakes in our decisions. Okay? Hmm. Carry on. One is superior. Yeah. One is superior and the other is subordinate. One who understands the two knowers of the field to be one and the same contradicts the Supreme Personality of God, who states here very clearly, I am also the knower of the field who, or of activity. One who misunderstands the rope to be a serpent is not of knowledge. There are different kinds of bodies and there are different owners of the bodies. Because each individual soul has its individual capacity for lording it over material nature, there are different bodies but the supreme also is present in them as the controller the word cha is significant for it indicates a total number of bodies that is the opinion of sila bharade vidya Bhushna. krishna is the super soul present in each and every body apart from the individual soul and krishna explicitly says here that real knowledge is to know that the super soul is the controller of both the field of activities and the finite enjoy okay so see, one who misunderstands a rope to be a serpent is not in knowledge. That kind of example is given basically to tell us how we have to work hard to cure ourselves of the tendency to become deluded. The Ishopanisha talks about the different mistakes that the GY is like to make so five or six times. One of them is that the tendency to get deluded. Another is the tendency to get to cheat. There's always that lurking in us to cheat a little bit to get our way. Of course, nobody can be, I mean, is going to be so perfect that they never cheat or never do some wrong things. It's not like that. But the tendency to be deluded is what? You see a, a rope and you think it's a serpent. Or you see a serpent and you think it's a rope and catch hold of it. So this tendency to, to be deluded, to delude us, is the work of maya or the material energy. So... And why this is being said is because it's already told us that we are fallible. The jiva is fallible and can make mistakes where the Supreme Lord does not make mistakes. 
there are different kinds of bodies and there are different uh, owners of the bodies because each individual soul has his individual capacity for lording it over material nature there are different bodies mm. but the supreme also is present in them as the controller the word cha is significant for it indicates the total number of bodies that is the opinion of shri baladev vidyabhushan who is an acharya or a commentator in our gaudiya line Krishna is the super soul present in each and every body apart from the individual uh, soul and Krishna explicitly says here that real knowledge is to know that the super soul is the controller of both the field of activities and the finite enjoyer to know and i would say to accept that so because uh, krishna is also supremely independent this is one of the things that we have a very hard time accepting as we move forward in spiritual life or as, just as time passes because often there are no clear answers why certain things happen for example i know uh, just the other day i got a call from somebody who they had her husband was working in doha qatar i'm not sure in what capacity chameleons she had even learned the language arabic or whatever it is and uh, she and they were kind of doing quite well uh, suddenly because of the krishna conscious activities the local police it's like that it's quite strict in though in qatar and this is not the first instance he was given 24 hours or 48 hours or something to leave the country she was already in mayapur doing the service that i was doing before covid that is like course coordination not just teaching but her name is padma sundari and she's got a daughter who settled in australia so she um, uh, her husband was given this kind of notice and as i said i know of another family or that also had this problem so when they have to leave like that their bank assets get frozen immediately and as she said they in whatever items for the house they had collected for using and like investing let's say a good cooking range a good uh, dishwasher a washing machine normally when people quit that country and come they are given the permission to push put everything on a ship and then it's brought cargo this guy just get out with his life and net result was that once he had been identified as a hari krishna an action of this drastic kind was taken against him the other friends there part of all that hari krishna home programs just completely blocked his number on their phone and stopped contacting him because otherwise they would be in trouble they were very worried and praying for him but they couldn't do anything but then they will trace those calls and not only that the items that are left in the house some of them would have liked to take these items but no message could reach them so padma sundari says all that like this in one swift uh in the matter of 48 hours i have to just forget i had that lovely dishwasher i had that convenient cooking range i had mm. this i had that i had that nice sofa on which i used to sit and chant everything she had to forget until he actually cleared out of there she was praying desperately that basically he won't be hanged because it's okay. very a uh, very uh, uh, unreasonable the way the government reacts yeah you know well you can't reason with them you can't bargain with them is a big guy this my, her husband big big huge guy so he somehow come what did he do he came straight to mayapur where they just finished building a house and upstairs had given for rent so he mm-hmm. came in a steep shock took up an administrative post in the mayapur community hospital that's coming up as a 100 bedded hospital now they have a dialysis machine they have doctors so on he is not a doctor so he is just fled with his life now a lot of people will ask this question they were doing uh, quite well they had joined hari krishna they were doing home programs there for other indians they were not trying to convert any muslims they would never dare try that mm-hmm. but then why did this happen you know there's no real answer and when she called me she told me she is going back to her nadu her native place because she has a patch of land which she wants to sell to raise funds because suddenly they are in a, like they have a financial crunch you know assets have been frozen what he was earning has stopped so she is going to sell up she parked herself in uh, tutikorin or somewhere 
and tried, but she says it's such a conservative setup. They will not do final business with a woman. They want to see a man's face. So she's forced to ask her husband, come out, take, yeah, what to do? Imagine Tamil Nadu was a place which had a woman chief minister for uh, ages. She said, makes no difference on the ground. People are willing with good money to buy this plot of land. But when it comes to finally signing the document, they will not do business with the woman. So she's forced to call her husband out of the community hospital, explain, say, I don't want to lose this job. This is a paid service. I just have to go. So then the question comes, why did this happen to them? And as she says, the advice that's given is, it's very hard to stomach this. You can say it's old karma, things they did. She anyway has had a very challenging life always. That's a different story. And she's pretty capable. Uh, but uh, as she says, finally one person gave her the answer. Krishna is supremely independent. He may have a logic to why he's done this for us. Maybe a new phase will open in their lives where they will forget about all their wealth, but be, be financially uh, sufficiently well off gradually mm. and just focus and concentrate on their um, uh, their service. Because otherwise, mm. maybe he would hang on and hang on and hang on there saying, okay, let me make some more money I need for my old age. Whereas maybe the Mayapur hospital uh, uh, needs him. Mayapur anyway always needs people to develop that place. So, supremely independent, he can act as he feels like this is a very tough one to chew and swallow. Very, very tough one. The most unlikely people get, like you say, you know, uh, like a double whammy, hit from here, hit from there. And then the people who often should be in some kind of trouble, they seem to be going okay. It's a very tough one. But he's saying here, yeah, you are going to say something? No, I was just going to say, I think Krishna also, like, I think I've, uh, I've read somewhere where it says that uh, whenever you get close, uh, whenever you get, I'm not sure where it is, but I've heard somebody saying also. Uh, it's like whenever you get closer to Krishna, the more he will like take away the things, like the material things away from you. So, like, it's if you're, if you if you're going through some type of tragedy like that in the material world, it just means that you are, you know, at least if you're, if you're like a very, like if you're a person who's like devoted to Krishna and you're like, you know, uh, you're doing the practices daily and you're very, uh, very serious about it, then um, in one sense, Krishna will create that sort of situation because he wants you to get away from that, you know, those material things, like you said, like get away from that and then focus more on him so that you know the more you get closer to him the more he takes away everything basically i guess actually so that, I, that verse what you just mentioned is from the bhagavatam you can type and find uh, it yes yeah. yes uh, uh, it starts like that and it goes yeah. on to say when they lose <laughs> when they lose all their belongings or material securities their friends dump them because in the material mm. world want someone who is poor, you see? So the friends yeah. will dump them, the people will, uh, they become isolated and they will take more and more shelter of the Lord, as you correctly said. This is the verse, Yasya Ham Nami. Okay. Okay, yeah, so shall we Okay. Yeah, shall we Next verse. Tatshetram yatcha yadraksha yadvikari yatashayat satyo yat prabhavascha tat samasena meshuno tatshetram yatcha yadraksha yadvikari yatashayat satyo yat prabhavascha tat samasena meshuno Again. Okay, uh, please read the translation. Now, please hear my brief description of this field of activity and how it is constituted, what its changes are, whence it is produced, who that knower of the field of activities is, 
and what his influences are. Okay, so one minute. What is this? Now, please hear my brief description of this field of activity, how it is constituted. That's basically about the body. What its changes are, from where it is produced, whence means from where. Who that knower of the field of activities and what his influences are. Okay, let's see what the purpose says. The Lord is describing the field of activities and the knower of the field of activities in their constitution positions. One has to know how this body is constituted, the materials of which this body is made, under whose control this body is working, how the changes are taking place, where from the changes are coming, what the causes are, what the reasons are, what the ultimate goal of the individual soul is, what the causes are, from where the changes are coming, what the causes are of those changes, what the reasons are for the changes, what the ultimate goal of the individual soul is, fine. And what the actual form of the individual soul is, wow. One should also know the distinction between the individual living soul and the super soul, the different influences, the potentials, etc. One just has to understand this Bhagavad Gita directly from the description given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead and all this will be clarified. But one should be careful not to understand, not to consider the Supreme Personality of God in everybody to be the same, to be one and the same as the individual soul or the jiva. This is something like equating the potent and the important. Also, it is this concept of merging like as in uh, monotheism. That monotheism has its place, mayavad or monotheism, but the danger is if there are no two entities, if they merge and become one, then there is no opportunity for service and an exchange of sentiments. This is the kind of basic limitation of the concept of monotheism. Sorry, I think monotheism means one God. That's not what I one meant. God, yeah. One God. That's not. I meant Mayavad or uh, what is it called? Im Mayavad. That we basically Im lose God. our individuality and personality and mage merge with the supreme at the time of liberation so that is a kind of strong branch of uh, spiritual philosophy and the uh, shortcoming in that is that if, the, if we really merge with the supreme lord then there are no two separate entities and how can any exchange of feelings and how can any exchange of service be done how can there be any response reciprocation so then it becomes a very dry affair it doesn't soften the heart, oil the heart, doesn't leave us with memories to cherish mm. of how the Lord basically always helped and reciprocated us. It doesn't give us the opportunities for those different, what is it, the bhavas, the vatsalya bhav and the sakya, sakya and so on, the others. Right. Any questions here or shall we proceed? Uh, no, we can proceed to the next verse, I think. Rishi Bhir Bahudagitam Rishi Bahudagitam Chando Bhir Vividaihi Pratak Brahma Sutra Padaishchaiva Etu Madhvir Vinishchitehi Rishi Bhir Bahudagitam Chando Bhir Vividaihi Pratak from Sutra Padesh Chaiva E to Madhvi Virishitehi. Rishi Bir Bahuda Gita Chandu Bir Vivitehi Pratak from Masuta Padesh Chaiva E to Madhvi Virishitehi. So uh, please read that knowledge. That knowledge of the field of activities and of the knower of activities is described in various sages in various Vedic writings. It is, it is especially presented in Vedanta Sutra with all the with all reasoning as to cause and effect. The purport. Uh, okay, you are still in the translation. It is especially presented in the Vedanta Sutra with all reasoning as to cause and effect. Uh, right, okay. Uh, we kindly start with the purport. Yeah, the Supreme Personality of Krishna is the highest authority in explaining this knowledge. 
still as a matter of still as a matter of course learned scholars and standard authorities always give evidence from previous authorities Vishal explaining this most controversial point regarding the duality and non duality of the soul and the super soul by referring to a scripture the vedanta which is accepted as authority first he says this is according to different sages as far as the sages are concerned besides himself vyasa deva the author of the vedanta sutra is a great sage and in the vedanta sutra duality is perfectly explained and vyasa deva's father Para, parashara is also a great sage and he writes in his books of religiosity aham tvam cha tatanye v u i and the various other living entities are all transcendent although in material bodies now we are falling into the ways of the three modes of material nature according to our different karma as such some are on higher levels and some are in the lower nature the higher and lower natures exist due to ignorance and are being manifested in an infinite number of living entities but the super soul which is infallible is uncontaminated by the three qualities of nature and is transcendent Similarly, in the original Vedas, a distinction between the soul, the super soul, and the body is made, especially in the Khatta Upanishad. There are many great sages who explain this, and Parashara and Parashara is considered principal among them. Okay, just hold on. What do you feel is meant by there are living entities with the higher nature and lower nature? Such some are higher levels and some are in the lower nature. Now we yes. have fallen in. of the three modes of material nature according to a different karma yeah what do you feel is what is this this referring to so this is just uh, I, i guess i'm thinking it's something related to like how um, like uh, how conditioned we are in terms of uh, like you know in the in, in our relation with the material uh, modes of nature like um if so some some like you know um some living entities are like on a path that is you know that has like a higher uh, goal in mind like for example the more closely you are to god or krishna consciousness or whatever it's like higher nature but as a lower nature is something that you are trying to uh you are engaged in a lot of you know like more of ignorance activities and things like that now that stuff yeah it certainly and, uh, yeah so yeah might just move up a couple of sentences and see uh we you i and the various other living entities are all transcendental originally although in mm-hmm. many material bodies now we have fallen into the ways of the three modes of material nature according to a different karma so it might also be a so the different species you know how you get a lower birth and a higher birth in this a cycle of birth and death depending on our past activities we take birth in the lower species which means less consciousness less mm. ability to inquire or practically zero ability to inquire about god i think it might also be a reference to that lower nature you know i think my only thing with that is like uh when it comes to living entities um like we uh, we definitely know that for us human beings we can only uh you know we can only like know how other human beings would think whereas so other species um like i don't know i feel like because they have they probably would have a different a uh, karma altogether in terms of what yeah, they are supposed to we don't incur karma for biting yeah. and and eating and they don't because they are working yeah. according to the laws of the species they are born into sure yeah. they don't yeah, that's so true in that, in that hmm. case uh, i was just thinking like you know does so do the things that we are like currently learning will that will that apply to them also because i don't think it would in, in some of correct something uh, it probably your explanation is a better fit for this isn't it because yeah. they are not even so i think yes your answer is a better fit now we have fallen into the base of the three modes of material nature according to a different karma as such some are on a higher level some are on the in the lower nature the higher lower exist due to ignorance and are being manifested 
in an infinite number of living entities okay but the super soul which is infallible is un uncontaminated by the three qualities of nature and is transcendental similarly in the original vedas a distinction between the soul the super soul and the body is made especially in the katha upanishad there are many great sages who have explained this and parashar is considered principal among them okay mm. Yeah, I agree. Your explanation is a better fit as to what is being referred to, rather than the species. Right. Uh, please read on the word Chandobhi. Yeah, the word Chandobhi refers to the various Vedic literatures, the Taittiriya Upanishad, for example, which is a branch of the Yajur Veda, describes nature, the living entity, and the supreme personality of God. As stated yeah. before. Kshetra is the field of activities, and there are two kinds of Kshetra Gnya, yeah. the individual living entity and the supreme living entity. As stated in, as stated in the Taittiriya Upanishad, chapter 2, text 5, Brahma Bhucham Pratishta, there is a manifestation, uh, yeah, there is a manifestation of the supreme lord energy known as Annamaya. Dependence upon food for existence. Uh, that's dependent upon food for existence. This is a materialistic realization of the Supreme. Then in Pranamaya, after realizing the Supreme Absolute Truth in food, one can realize the Absolute Truth in the living symptoms or life forms. In Jnanamaya, uh, realization extends beyond the living symptoms to the point of thinking, feeling and willing. Then there is yeah. Brahman realization called the Jnanamaya, in which the living entity's mind and life symptoms are distinguished from the living entity himself. The next and supreme stage is Anandamaya, realization of the all blissful nature. Thus, there are five stages of Brahman realization, which are called Brahma, Brahma Pucham. Out of these, the first three, Annamaya, Pranamaya, and Jnanamaya, involve the field of activities of living entities. Transcendental to all these field of activities is the Supreme Lord, who is called Ananda Maya. The Vedanta Sutra also describes the Supreme by saying Ananda Mayo Vyasat. The Supreme Personality world is by nature full of joy. Uh, to enjoy his transcendental bliss, he expands into Vijnanamaya, Pranamaya, Jnanamaya, and Anamaya. In the field of activities, the living entity is considered to be the enjoyer, and different from him is the Ananda Maya. The, that means that if the living entity des decides to enjoy in dovetailing himself with Ananda Maya, then he becomes perfect. This is the real picture of the Supreme uh, Lord as the Supreme Knower of the field. The living entity as the subordinate knower and the nature of the field of activities. One has to search for this truth in the Vedanta Sutra or Krama Sutra. Okay, so these five Mayas, this Annamaya, Pranamaya, at least these initial ones, Anamaya, Pranamaya, Gyan. Uh, the, what's the next one? Gyanamaya. Yeah, Anamaya. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, is this kind of reasonably clear? Just means that Anamaya, uh, in the lowest level of consciousness, that would involve animals and even us at one stage, mm. we realize there is some higher source that is supplying food, that's making it possible for us to get food. Mm. Definitely also in the case of animals, they may not think through and we don't know what they think because they can't communicate with us. And with like infants, for them, their existence, just born infants, five years, sorry, five months, six months, mm. all they can respond to is the possibility for food, whether it is in the form of the mother's milk or mm. uh, semi-solid or whatever. Their responses, their... Uh, trust in someone is all because they can only the cognitive faculties are so limited at that stage they see someone as a source from which that food through the mouth nourishment is going to come mm. you, you see a lot of these videos short videos on youtube you know people put these shots their children getting so excited when some sign of food somebody some maybe it's a food that only the adult can eat and the child can't eat because the child figures out that much that it is some food going into the adult mom or dad's mouth. And mm. they just end up like literally in Malayalam as says a tulli mm. Because their consciousness is restricted only to this Annamaya. Mm. And uh, we are being told here that even in that 
consciousness, God is present as a supreme power that is making it possible for them to get that nourishment. So for mm. animals, for birds, they never really get beyond that in one sense. You know, mm. when the birds are uh, cheep, 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 cheeping all the time, they're actually in anxiety. Where is food? Where is food? Phila Prabhupada says that. Where is the next food going to come from? Similarly with the animal, his entire existence. After that, of course, there is mating. You know, that's why there is that famous verse, Ahare Nidra Bhaya Maithunam Cha Samanya Metat Pashubir Naranam That if it is only these four things, food, sleep, uh, uh, fear, and the desire to mate, then animals and human beings are on the same level. There's no difference as long as we live like that. It's just that we have more sophisticated ways of doing these four things. Mm. But uh, that how the human being has this extra faculty to inquire about God and for spiritual realization. That mm. is what makes it different from the animal. So here, if God is present in the Anamaya kind of experience, next it says Pranamaya, slightly higher consciousness is you could say, again, the animals also fit into that and so do we. We carry this consciousness that I might die. Someone dies, oh, it may be me next. Mm. You know, this constant fear lurks over us. Someone known to us. Try to think back as we are growing up, our first experience of somebody dying. You know, how it is not yeah. spoken of clearly. Nobody gives us information why they died, what happens after they die. Some Often it is in school. Some unfortunate child who short-lived dies. And uh, this is our first uh, experience, at least like second hand of death, naturally. In some cases, say a family member dies young, you see a dead body lying there, you see the other members crying, there is loss. So I'm talking about really young people. Mm. So that is Pranamaya. At that stage, we are aware of some higher force, so we are turning to that higher force for protection just to stay alive, mm. simply to stay alive. Hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah. Got it. And in Jnana Maya, realization extends beyond the living symptoms of life and food to the point of thinking, feeling, willing. That the Lord is present as we learn to think, feel, will, and do things is very much present. Hmm. The next, uh, no, sorry, and book there is Vigyana Maya, which is a higher level of consciousness in which we start inquiring into. Vigyan means realization, inquiring into uh, self realization. Why are we here? Where do we go? What is the purpose of our life? Why do these things happen? That's a higher level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And finally, Ananda Maya, those who make it on the spiritual path come to a point where they start experiencing, at least in flashes, their original identity as being part and parcel of the Lord and therefore being supremely blissful. You know, if you if you go back and refer to, remember I told you there should be one sentence that should be like a default setting in, running in our brain, uh, that uh, actually the material body, the living entity is completely different from the material body. He somehow becomes related. Mm. So once we understand that thoroughly, then we go back to becoming blissful, despite all the kind of harassing or harrowing things happening around us. So that is right. Anandam. That's the top is, the, the, the top most. Right. Okay, read on. Um, yeah, in it is mentioned here that the codes of the Brahma Sutra are very nicely arranged according to cause and effect. Some of the yeah. sutras or aphorisms are Naviyad. Ashrutehe, uh, Canada 2, Chapter 2, text, uh, Canada 2, Chapter 3, Text 2, and Natma Ashrutehe, Canada 2, Chapter 3, Text 18, and Paratu Tatshrutehe, uh, Canada 2, Chapter 3, Text 48. The first aphorism indicates a field of activities, the second indicates a living entity, and the third indicates a supreme lord. The summum bonum among all manifestations of various entities. First aphorism, what is an aphorism? Can you just check on your phone and see uh, what comes up? Yeah, yeah. Some sutras are aphorisms. Na viyad ashrute. Is it saying something? Like you mean oh, like okay. a 
is it yeah, is it what it's it's like a a short phrase that expresses in a in a clever way something that is true oh like so, they say short and pithy p i t h y something yeah. short and fitting in a clever yeah. way okay so what are these aphorisms na viyaj ashrute na atma shrute para tat tat shrute that it's is like a, yeah it's like a saying or something like your uh, uh, like you have these words you know like uh, like uh, that uh, hard work makes the dream work or something like that like some there's some saying yeah. so oh, i think that's yeah. what it is Okay, like a proverb or a saying. The first yeah. aphorism is the field of activities. The second yeah. indicates living entity, and the third indicates the supreme lord. The sum of both are among all the manifestations of various entities. So now, really, this is the heart of the Gita. Of course, in one sense, the Bhakti chapters are over. We finish with the Bhakti chapter. Uh, uh, no, this is very much the Bhakti chapters. Sorry, what am I saying? Mm. Chapters, no, chapter seven to twelve, the Bhakti chapters are over. Yeah. But now. doing the gyan section which is giving us a knowledge that's very essential to uh, for uh, for us to be situated firmly on the bhakti path so the we were asked to summarize uh, all that knowledge that is going to come in these last six chapters it is this there are three person three things to remember there is us there is the supreme lord and then there is nature nature no there are different dramas in the facilities given by nature it basically means the three modes of material nature the mm. three modes operating on us this pushes us to act in certain ways then we get karmic reaction we respond again to that karmic reaction when it comes we get angry happy so on so this whole drama it is three individuals here there is the ishwara super soul sitting inside watching everything and also there in vigra form there is us and then there is nature prakriti okay mm. so that is what that is why it says the nature the enjoyer and consciousness mm. should be try to finish we have 10 minutes so we should be try to finish the next verse it's a pretty simple it is two verses Clap together. It's just like a whole list of items of knowledge. Okay. Yeah. At least, I mean, Ma we may not we may not get through the purport, but at least let's start it. So we know okay. that next class we are going to come back to six and seven. Okay. Right. Yeah. Mahabhutani ahankaro buddhi avyaktam evacha indriyani dashikamcha panch chendriya gocharaha. महाभूतांद्रियाोचर अहंकारो बुद्धि अभ्यक्तमेवचंद्रियोचर इंटेलिजेंस Yeah, no, no. Air, water, earth. Oh, I thought you're talking about the the remaining translation. Um, no, the five elements. I get it. The air, elements. water, what fire, is... earth, uh, ether. Ether. Yeah. ether. Yeah. yeah. So that's the first piece here. 
though it doesn't go into the detailed file. Then there is false ego. That's our ahankar. Therefore, you have the word ahankar. That basically, not in the traditional sense of the term ahankar, but all of us have ahankar because that is what motivates us to identify goals and motivates us to act. Intelligence, right? Buddhi, the unmanifested, the 10 senses in the mind. Now, what are the 10 senses? The, there is basically, there are the five gross senses and then there are the five subtle senses. The so five the gross... That's, that smell in that thing. Taste, that smell. Yeah. Uh, the thing is... Uh. The five gross senses would be in hands, legs, legs eyes. Yeah. eyes okay. Physical... Yeah, uh, hands, legs, genitals, nose, ears, eyes, mouth. How much okay. does it make? Just check. Uh, Just check. Quick search and see uh, the punch in punch indriyas. Oh, so it's. Uh... Uh, vision, hearing, smell, taste, touch. No, actually, it's here in the purport. It's silly of me. Yeah, it's here. If you go jump to the next page, there are the yeah, five great. Oh, yeah, there yeah. are the five senses of. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gyanindriyas. Sorry, it is Gyanindriyas, the, those for acquiring knowledge. And then there are the Karmindriyas that help us do work. So the Gyanindriyas that help us uh, to acquire knowledge. The five working, uh, the Gyan Indriyas through which we acquire knowledge are the eyes, the ears, the nose, the tongue, and the skin. Mm. Skip touch we know, even if we are blindfolded. The sense of touch tells us somebody is near us or some mm. rat is creeping up our arm or ant is creeping up. So the, that those are the Gyan Indriyas, the ones through which knowledge of some, some sensation is acquired. The others are the Karma Indriyas with which we have to kind of depend on to work. So those are voice, legs, hands, anus, genitals. Therefore, the 10 Indriyas. All right. So let's stop here. Uh, so we just come back. It's almost 6 o'clock. And a friend of mine is leaving tomorrow for Mumbai. I forgot about that. So I have to send her a voice message. And we have some visitors coming later. So let's stop here, Kanan. This, uh, so we are going to come back to this. 6-7 uh, verse, the translation and the purport next class. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Okay. So, yeah, you're still having the Wi-Fi issue. Uh, uh, no, uh, actually, you know, it's just that my... It's probably come back by now. Let's see. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll, that... yeah, I'll end the podcast. Actually.